Hey, it's Phil from SmilingGardener.com, and we've been talking about the 80-20 rule this week, which is really trying to figure out what are the most important tasks we can do in our garden to get the best results. I'll put a couple of links down below in case you haven't been following along, and you can see what we've been talking about. But basically, we figured out that air and water and food are three of the most important elements for the garden. And the way to bring those in and, and improve those is with organic matter. But you want to make sure you're using organic matter correctly. And so yes, uh, a couple of days ago, I talked about uh, both mulch and compost, which are great sources of organic matter if you use them well. So you want to use an organic mulch, like a leaf mulch. And with compost, you want to use a well-made compost. And not too much of it, just a little bit of it. And these are going to improve the air, water, and food in your soil. Today, I want to get on to the third and fourth. And so the third one, and this one is amazing, this one is cover crops. And cover crops, when they're still growing, you might not call them organic matter, because usually organic matter is referring to uh, once animals and plants and other organisms are, in, are dead and in decay, we kind of call that organic matter. But cover crops, even when they're growing, uh, they bring a lot of benefits. And then when they're dying, they bring benefits too. So what a cover crop is, is when Often in, in the fallow season, so maybe in the fall, you plant some certain plants all in your garden, and then you let them stay there until spring when you want to start planting your food again. It could also be in, say you have an orchard, that, they are, that that is always underplanted with some kind of cover crop. And so when it comes to air in the soil, cover crops are great at improving the health of the soil just because they're plants that often grow very fast. And when the roots grow, they grow and die back, and they grow and die back. And all, when that's happening, it's putting more organic matter into the soil and creating more air spaces in the soil. Sometimes we'll even use specific cover crops such as a, a various kinds of radishes that really have deep roots that can penetrate incredibly compacted hard pans, break that up and bring more oxygen into that soil. So they can be really useful for that, for bringing air in. In terms of water, cover crops play a really important role in that if you were to just leave your garden without any soil on it, without any plants on it uh, during the rainy season, uh, uh, or even during the dry season, a lot of the water in the soil is going to gradually leach out of the soil. And actually, same with the nutrients. So when cover crop is there with its roots, it's going to hang on to that water, hang on to, that to those nutrients uh, in a way that would not happen at all if you didn't have any plants there. So they're really important for that. And also, they'll keep microorganisms happy in the soil, especially uh, fungi, like mycorrhizal fungi. But all kinds of microorganisms are going to either die or go dormant if they don't have plant partners there. So having something covering the ground is good all the time. And that's where a cover crop comes in. Um, when it comes to food, once the cover crop is ready to be, to be taken out, you can use it like a mulch. So you can cut it down and use it like a mulch. Maybe lightly turn it into the top of the soil just so more of that nutrition goes into the soil rather than up into the air. And then some of it can be used in a compost bin as well. So all of that becomes uh, food for the soil and becomes a way to improve the air, water, and food for the soil. So cover crops are really affordable to buy some seed. I think in some ways they're even more useful than, than a mulch and a compost in some ways. Uh, so that's cover crops. The fourth one is something that is relatively new in the organic gardening world, and that is called biochar. So the char refers to charcoal. And charcoal is when you take um, some kind of a carbon-rich carbon material, such as wood, and burn it at very high temperatures in the absence of oxygen, so without oxygen, and you make charcoal. What biochar refers to is when we're trying to do this basically in a biologically sustainable way. So we're using plants that are non-toxic. Uh, so not like, say, pressure-treated lumber. We're using non-toxic plants, hopefully not non-genetically modified plants. And we're using plants that wouldn't have been better left growing. So mostly, it's even more important to have plants growing and um, doing the things they do there. But sometimes there are plants that we would be better used turned into biochar, maybe invasive opportunistic plants or other plants. So we're trying to use plants that are good to be turned into biochar. Uh, we're trying to do it in such a way that it is sustainable. So we don't want to make biochar on the west coast and ship it to the east coast. We're trying to do it more locally. And in the end, we're generally bringing that into the soil. So all of these things are what mean biochar. It's just a, it's just a charcoal that's made with the in a biologically sustainable way. Biochar overall, I would say, is not 
as useful for the garden as compost. It doesn't have the wide array of nutrients that compost has. It doesn't have the beneficial microorganisms that compost has. And it doesn't have the moderating effect on soil, like on the, on the pH balance, ultimately, of the soil that compost has. It's actually, biochar is often quite high in pH and so can cause some pretty major soil imbalances, much more than compost can. But what biochar does have is it can hold a lot of water. It can hold a lot of nutrients. It makes homes for the biology in the soil, especially fungi, but also bacteria. They really love this, this biochar, and they set up shop there. And so it creates habitat for them. And what it also does is it takes this carbon that was in the wood or the plants that we burned and turns it into an incredibly stable, stable form that we can put into the soil and it's going to last for hundreds, maybe even a thousand years down there, whereas the composting cycle is much more of a, a fast cycle. So where biochar could be really useful is if we're trying to reverse climate change, which we pretty desperately need to do pretty fast, biochar could play a huge role in that. Uh, and I think it could have some benefits to garden health as well. I think it should best be used in conjunction with compost because they work together beautifully. So, that's it for those four things. So basically, I always like to try to bring in at least one source of organic matter into my soil, if not a couple of sources. So that's mulch, compost, cover crops, perhaps getting into biochar. We're still learning more about it right now. We're still doing a lot of testing with it. Uh, you can learn to make it yourself, and I'll save that for another day. Uh, what's going to happen is in a couple of days, I'm going to be talking about, because we have been talking about the 80-20 rule in the garden, I'm going to be talking about when it falls apart a little bit in this whole gardening thing. And in the meantime, in case you missed it, the new Smiling Gardener Academy Lite version is available, along with the main course. Both are available until just until this Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm really excited to see how people like this new condensed course. So basically, there are six months in this course. The first month is all about mulching and about how to make a garden bed, a really healthy garden bed. The second month I get into fertilizing, which is where we kind of are going beyond the 80-20 rule because we're trying to grow highly nutritious crops, and that's where fertilizing comes in. Month three is about composting and about making and using microbial inoculants to improve the biology of the soil. Uh, month four is about organic pest control, taking a very, like a, a very proactive, preventative, holistic approach to pest control. Month five is all about plants, so about how to start your own seed, how to plant various kinds of plants, and also about cover crops, a whole module on cover, cover crops, like I talked about today. And then month six, we get into food growing, and specifically how to grow certain vegetables and fruits and just how to do a good job of growing food. So that's the Academy Light. The, acad the full Academy goes into much more detail on some other things, uh, but you, I'll give you a link down below where you can check that out. And today, I'll just ask you, uh, what do you think about what we've been talking about here? Which forms of organic matter do you prefer to use in your garden of mulch, compost, uh, uh, cover crops, and biochar? And do you have any questions about all of these things or about anything we've been talking about today? Post down below, and I'll get back to you soon, and I'll be in touch again in a couple of days. Take care.